so good. It's your girl, Risa. Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday, happy Monday. It's May I have just a little more Jesus Monday, y'all. Yes, it is, once again. So I'm getting ready to get myself dressed. Um, Got some people coming by to do some things at the house today. So I'm up this morning. I didn't sleep well last night. I don't know what it was, but I don't know. I can't explain it. I was just agitated in my body. I mean, just no type of rest. And so I had to get up this morning, get my little girls ready for school. My intention was to go back to sleep. But I said, let me go on and stay up. So, um... I know y'all can see my bra for this, but I gotta get me a tank top. You know, that's one color tank top. I don't own, well, I don't own a gray one, and I don't own a purple one. I haven't been able to find purple. Hold on a second. So, um, so that's the color tank top that I want to get, purple and gray. I want a light gray and a charcoal gray. And since the, the season has changed, maybe they'll have some in Walmart. And I need a red one. I have a navy blue somewhere, but I wear it. It's an outfit that I have, and I don't like to separate my outfit. But you know, just a little chit chat. I'm getting ready. Thought I'd come and talk to you guys. I'm up. I'm listening to George Maya on TBN. I was. I listened to Creflo Dollar and um, TD Jakes was playing, but. I didn't get a chance to pay attention to what he was saying, so I recorded it. I'm going to have to go back to it. Um, been on the phone, taking care of family business, doctor's appointments, and all that stuff. Corey had an appointment to see um, uh, his radiation specialist, so they called. Um, he has an appointment for speech, and they called, and then... Um, my daughter's school called, so yeah, I've been up taking care of all of that this morning, and I still have a few phone calls that I need to make, um, my cycle is getting ready to start, not to just say that, but I've been paying attention to see, usually my face turns really, really dark right around here. So I'm going to wait and see if it does. I've been washing my face sometimes three times a day. And I know that might be excessive. But um, my face is extremely oily. Like right now, I just woke up. I've been up for about two hours now. And I'm doing good. I'm not oily. Thank you, Jesus. Because I washed my face last night with uh, my Neutrogena face wash for oily skin. It's a deep cleanser. And then I use the, um, what I started out with, because I had makeup on my face. I slathered Noxzema all over my face, and I removed the makeup with the Noxzema. And then I went in with my Clean and Clear face wash, and I washed it twice. After that, I used the deep cleansing, um, no, after the Noxzema, I use my black soap. <laughs> yeah, I use my black soap, and then I use the Neutrogena, not the Neutrogena, the Clean and Clear, then the Neutrogena. 
So, yeah, I washed my face with all of that stuff last night. And the black soap is, you know, an all-natural soap. And I'm you, I remember when I was using my African black soap, I didn't have a problem with my face being oily. And I'm completely out of that. And I have a black soap that was sent to me um, by Hope Harris KD. And um, I've been using that, but I don't use it every day. And so I said, let me start to use it because I, I don't, I mean, how you wake up oily? I mean, seriously, all I did was sleep. And when I say I was oily, I look like Chicken George. Do y'all hear me? Yeah. So um, I didn't put any moisturizer on last night when I went to sleep. And I don't know. It's like when I put moisturizer on my face at night, um, I've never one been one to do that my whole life. I never put moisturizer on at night, but when I started doing it, that's when I would wake up oily. So I know everything don't work for everybody the same way. So we're gonna see. This is the milk of magnesia. See how that helped me. I can't stand when a when a cop get crusty like that. <laughs> Y'all know Joyce Mighty is a trip. I like watching her. She breaks things down for you. Put the top on the first bed and cap. So, got that. So, I'm going to read while I do my face. We are now in October. Today is the 13th, I believe it is. Yes. I haven't read out of my devotional books in a while because I've been doing it off of my phone. <laughs> you know, um, T.D. Jakes and Joyce Meyer and Creflo Dollar were all pretty much talking about fear or um, pushing your way through or prosperity. All of these things that pretty much mean moving forward. You know, moving forward, moving into your destiny. And so, um, I have let, um, fear cripple me for many years to the point of, um, me not doing a lot of things. Uh, my husband has always wanted to go on a cruise. I never did that because I don't like, because I can't swim. I have a fear of a lot of water. And so I let that cripple me from doing that. You know, doing some things, me and him being able to do some things that not only I like, but he likes. And um, a fear of a lot of things, you guys, seriously. I mean, some things that might be simple to other people. You know, um, I remember growing up, I had a fear of being wrong. I never wanted to give anybody a problem. I never wanted to be wrong or to, you know what I mean? I never wanted to be in the wrong, you know, so I didn't do a lot of things, but then, you know, as children, um, I used to get caught up in the middle. You know how when somebody do something, they all get punished? Yeah. But then I did do some things, you know, um, I guess as I got, it got to the point where like, might as well go ahead and shoot. I get in trouble when I don't do it, might as well go ahead. So. And then I got to where I wanted to do things on my own as I got a, to be a teenager. Um, I never got suspended from school. Um, I did get a referral one time, and that was because this boy was bothering me, and I threw a book at him. He kept aggravating me. I was pregnant, too. That was my 12th grade year of school. He kept aggravating me, and I threw a book at him behind. I did. And the teacher happened to walk in just as I threw the book. The book was sliding across the floor. Who did that? And she wrote me up and sent me to the office. But she didn't write him up. And I kept telling them to leave me alone. So I had my witnesses in the classroom. 
So she sent me to the dean. The dean didn't do anything. You know, she just told me to stay down there in her office. And I told, I admitted it. I told her, yeah, I threw the book at him. He kept bothering with me. So I had one referral my whole life. But as time went on and I got into my my routine of watching other people and, you know, when I finally moved out on my own and I started doing things that I know I really didn't want to do, but I did it anyway. And, yeah, I, um, because it was in my home, you know, I wasn't a, I used to drink, not a lot, but I would drink every now and then, especially when, like, you know, fight night or watching the game or, um, you know, you have company over, you entertain and you would get a little drink here, a little drink there. But I didn't like the way it made me feel. I didn't, even though I got to the point where I had a specific type of drink that I liked. Yeah, but I just didn't like, I would sip on it. And I would never really drink a lot of, but it was a, it, I used to always be like, oh, that's good. You know, I like that particular drink, but I didn't like the way it made me feel. And so, you know, it was kind of iffy, you know, so I, it was like I was doing certain things, but I didn't like the way I felt doing it. And usually when people drink, it's because they like that feeling, you know, they like the taste, they like the feeling, they can deal with it. I couldn't. So it was a, on occasion that I used to drink. And um, that was liquor. And then I would drink a beer. You talking about a nasty taste, but the more you drink it, the more you get used to it. So I started, you know, following the crowd, and we get us a beer. Everybody else, they we chipping our money and buy beer, this that, and the other. So I got used to it, and you know. It wasn't that I would go out and buy me a beer. If somebody had some, I would drink it, you know. But it just, like, it never felt right. It never felt right. And I'm grateful for that because my mom was an alcoholic. My dad was an alcoholic. And they both were on drugs. And I didn't see myself going in the direction that they were going. But now I sit here, I can say I was doing that. And if it had not been for the Lord, if it had not been for the Lord, I'm telling you, mm, mm, mm. y'all, my pores are ridiculous. Y'all can't see them right now, but not on this side. This side is not too bad, but my face is broken out right in here. And I don't know what's doing it. It's a lot of little bumps, but you know. T.D. Jakes, he did a, I watched one of his videos, it was about, you know, accepting your past, that's your past, and you have a future, and just because you did some things back then doesn't mean that's who you are now, and, and that's true, it's true, because we all can be changed, but we have to ask God for help, and today they were talking about living in your purpose, pushing through your fear, um, uh, uh Creflo Dollar talked about um, God, when his, his scripture says, he shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory. Okay. You just think about he shall supply all of your need. And he said the term need um, in Greek means demand. So when you give your demand, God shall supply that according to he said he shall supply your need, which is your demand. But think about all the things that he's already said that we can have. All of these things that are available to us. He said we can have healing. We can be um, new. We can have our bills paid, food on our table. All of these things are available. But if you don't put in your request for it, your demand, you know, he provides it anyway. But he, he said he shall supply all of your needs, your demand according to his riches in glory. And where does the glory live? The glory of God lives inside of you. So you have to give your demand. You know, you have to um, ask, you know, but you got to have faith. 
and you got to expect him to do it, okay? Hold on a minute. That's Jesse Duplantis. I like him too. So I turn that down. So the scripture for today, October 13th, is Psalms 143, 9 through 10. It says, Ask God for help. That's the title. I don't know if y'all can see that. Ask God for help. You know, when you dye your hair after a while, that color, you would think that the color would stop shedding or come, you know, what you call it? Running. But I got dye under my nails and I don't know how to get it out. But anyway, I don't flip the script. He says, ask, rescue me for my enemies, from my enemies, O Lord, for I hide myself in you. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Matthew 7 and 7. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will, and it will be opened to you. So I'm thinking right now, all of the things that I listened to this morning and was here today these this book was not written by anybody that i listened to this morning but it's telling you the same thing you think about god you think about how your steps are ordered you think about he knows every day of your life and he laid this out i got it not three times but this is the fourth time that i have gotten the same mess message ask and it will be given to you you got to give your demands okay and it says asking is God's plan to get you to go to him for help. The Bible clearly emphasizes the importance of asking in order to receive. The repetition of this in word and story leaves no doubt as to how God wants you to act when you have a need. Okay? God wants you to ask. Three little letters. Ask. That means a lot. Ask. You'll never know unless you ask. You'll never have it unless you ask. If you are in need for something or have a demand, you can't get it until you ask for it. You ask. If you want a job, you have to go and apply. It's like asking for it. Hey, I'm here to apply. I'm asking for you to consider me for the job. Ask. Charles. Virgin said, whether we like it or not, asking is the rule of the kingdom. There is always something to be gained when you ask God for help. Cry out your need to God. He will honor your request. He will strengthen you for your task, give you insight for your relationships, enlighten your mind, and fill your heart. In the Lord's Prayer, you are encouraged to ask God for help six times. And the prayer for this devotional is, Dear God, I am grateful that you are ready to give when I am ready to ask. Amen. Ask. He says in the Lord's Prayer, He tells you to ask six times. So whether we like it or not, asking is the rule of the kingdom. There is always something to be gained when you ask God for help. In whatever area of your life, you got to ask. You At some point, you have to ask. You're going to ask for something. <laughs> and if you don't ask, you will never receive it. You will never receive it if you don't ask. And that's the thing about our relationship with God is because, you know, they say, if you think about it, okay, God knows everything about us, okay? He already knows our needs. But that's just like us as adults that have children. You can always tell when your child wants something, but you're not just going to automatically give it to them. You want them to come to you and ask. And when they do that, that forms a bond, a form of communication between the two of you. He, that child is asking 
either asking for something to eat, asking for your help, need you to do something. Just like yesterday, my daughter um, asked me to do her hair. She won't know if I'm going to do it. Now, my kids do assume that I'm just going to automatically do their hair because I'm mommy. And I've, I've always done that. But I couldn't tell her. Um, she come and put the stuff down on my bed. I'm ready. I said, ready for what? For you to do my hair? I said, did you ask me? You know, mom, what you mean, mom? You have to ask. They're not little. My little bitty girls, no, they don't have to ask for their hair to be done because that's my job. But when you get to be a certain age and you know how to do it yourself, uh, you have to ask. Mm -mm. And see, with my older girls, I get creative moments, okay? All of this week, I have wanted, ever since I did my mom's friend hair last week, I have been in the mood to do sew-ins, quick weaves, not braids, you know, just dealing with hair. I have wanted to do that. Um, even though I bought some hair to do my little girl's hair, I just hadn't come up with a style that I think that will last for them. So I don't know about that one. But I, you know, I get in these creative moments where I want to do hair. And I tell my daughters, you know, come here, let me do your hair. Um, how you going to do it? Just let me do it. They don't trust me like that, that I'm going to do something that they're going to like. So I just have to just, I, I practice on myself put it that way <laughs> but you know when they want something they come and ask they do they have to and Ashley she she good for that she just gonna assume that I'm gonna do something and I always know when she wants something because she get up she start cleaning up she start doing this she start doing that and yeah I said what you want where you getting ready to go because that one right there Mold spurs could be growing out of her flow. She ain't gonna clean up nothing until she really ready. I mean, clothes, she could have no clean clothes at all. Mm hmm. But that chick will not clean up that room. I don't feel like it. And well, it ain't about what you feel. You either clean them up or they going outside in the garbage. Mm hmm. So they have to ask. You know, they get comfortable. Just like us, we get comfortable because we know God said he shall supply. And we get comfortable thinking, okay, well, he already know. I ain't got to ask. He going to provide. But no, he's telling you. He's telling you that you have to ask him. Mm -hmm. Ask for God's help. Excuse me, y'all. Um, the evening devotional is called Out of, Thanks Out of Thankfulness or Obligation. Out of Thankfulness or Obligation. It's a question. Psalms 116 verse 12. How can I repay the Lord all the good he has done for me? How can we, y'all? Is it possible to repay him for all that he has done for us? Okay, this girl talk time. With that question being thrown out there, how can we repay him for all that he has done? I'm not talking about just money, monetary things. Think about the number of times you done got drunk at the club. Passed out somewhere. <laughs> and you woke up with all your body parts and nobody had taken advantage of you. You think about even if somebody did kind of take advantage of you or you think about you might have been put in a situation that was not that didn't have a good ending for you you know um, but think about how if you go to him it's some things in us y'all that we as women go through he will heal us he will but you got to come to him you can't hold it. he said we can come and confess our sins we can come and talk to him about all our problems our concerns everything that it's heavy upon us. Mm -hmm. How can I repay the Lord all the good, all the good he has done? He kept my mind. 
he kept my body. He kept me. He paid my bills. Even when I didn't do right. Okay? How many of you uh got paid? Might have it might have been a sale somewhere. Mm-hmm. And you were like, okay. I can call and get an extension on this bill, or I'm not gonna pay it right now. I'm gonna wait till I get paid again, and I'm gonna pay it. And um, you know, it might be double, but I'm just gonna pay a little extra to kind of cut down on you know the previous balance, this that, and other. How many times have you done that? Has something come up? You go to work, and they say, "Well, you know, we got too many people here. Somebody got to go home," and they send you home. That's not hours you can collect, okay? You're like, oh my goodness, I got these bills got to be paid. Mm -hmm. I got these bills that need to be paid. Man, they messing with my money. I need these hours. How can they do that? And that's because we have anticipated on something, the future. We have counted our future a certain way. But yet, in the midst, if you think about it, I think about that God was saying, let me see, if I mess her up a little bit, is she going to trust me? That I got it. And if she come to me and ask for her, that I got it. How many times has he come through in spite of you being 20 hours short on your check? How many times has he come through when you had an unexpected bill to come up or your tires blew out. You hadn't anticipated on having them buy new tires or your transmission or something go wrong that you didn't plan because you plan to go and have a good time. You and the girls were going out of town for the weekend. We were going to do this. We were going to do that. We were going to hit that Victoria's Secret sale, the Bath and Body Works sale. J.C. Penney's got a, a, a 8 a.m. sale. Everything 75% off. That's on the clearance table. All bras and panties fifty percent off, and if you buy two, you get the third one free. But you get ready to bust that sale wide open. But guess what? You get up and go to the sale, and your tires are flat. <laughs> oh Lord, you'll be mad as I'll get out. But guess what? Look at how he blessed. Look at how good he is because. It could have been a time that your tires have gone flat and you didn't have two imaginary pennies to rub together to get those tires. Do you hear me? Yeah. He's still blessed. Mm -hmm. That's Psalms 116 and 12. Psalms 116, 16 through 17. God, here I am, your servant, your faithful servant. Set me free for your service. I am ready to offer the thanksgiving sacrifice and prayer and pray in the name of God. I'm going to read that again. God, here I am, your servant, your faithful servant. Set me free for your service. I am ready to offer the thanksgiving sacrifice and pray in the name of God. There will be certainly, there will certainly be times when God requires you to obey him in something that you find extremely challenging or unpleasant. That's where that fear comes in at. And you will be tempted to abandon what he called you to do. This is a test of your heart, of how you really view your relationship with God. Are you serving him out of thankful heart, of a thankful heart, willing to do whatever he tells you to do? Or are you serving him out of obligation, with limits on what you will do on his behalf? Are you committed to him because of your overflowing love a different assignment can leave you wondering why you should continue trusting and serving him but when you do you become an authentic living example of true praise and thanksgiving to god hmm. thank you lord listen at that when i say fear stopped me from doing a lot of things it didn't stop me i stopped me out of fear that I couldn't measure up, out of fear that I wasn't smart enough, out of fear that I was not, that was not for me. But that was something I chose. But I think about now, 
right this minute, listen, reading this and thinking about it, I can do anything that he has put before me because I'm not alone. He lives in me. He enables me because there's no such thing as luck. And you know how we get an idea. We hear something tell us and we were saying something told me. It wasn't something. How the, the Holy Spirit whispers to you. He talks to you. He guides you. He tells you to do something. And we say something told me. It wasn't something. But a lot of times we pray for things and when it comes to pass, we get scared because we're like, I'm not sure if this is the devil whispering to me or if this is just me wishful thinking, really wanting this to be this way or if this is God's blessing. Either way it goes. God is not going to tell you to hurt yourself. God is not going to tell you to do anything wrong. So with those two things, He's not going to tell you to lie. With those things, you just think about the positive things that he has told you to do. Now, we can look at it as negative. If he tells you to take $50 and give it to somebody or take your car keys and give them to somebody else, that leaves you with no transportation. Are we going to be diligent? Are we going to actually do that? Because we're like, hey, I'm not going to have transportation. I can't sit here and say that I will do it, <laughs> even though I know if God tells me to do that, I'm supposed to do that. But to be honest, I'd be like, but then we know we're not thinking about, I'm not thinking about the fact that God is not going to ask me to do that if, he, if he's not going to close that door if he don't have another one ready to be open. I'm saying that now. But I just pray from now on, whenever God tells me to do something that I heed his word that I do what he asks without fear without grumbling without second guessing myself that's with anything in life that song I trust you Lord it's not easy <laughs> I trust you by James Fortune do I really trust him? Do I trust him to do what I want him to do? Or am I going to trust him to be with me and guide me all the days of my life? Am I going to trust him enough to do whatever he asks me to do? Or is it that I'm just feeling the song? And I can say it has been times when I didn't, I didn't do what God asked me to do. And that meant that I didn't trust him wholeheartedly. I didn't trust him. And I have to ask for forgiveness. I do. Because there's no way I want to be out of God's will. And I'm not just saying that for monetary things. I'm not just saying that um, because I want something. It's because I need him. I need him to make right decisions. For me to make right decisions in my life. I definitely need him. And I cannot do it without him. I can't do it without him. Every time I've tried to do it without him, I've made a serious mistake. I've messed up. 